Okay, uh, good afternoon. Okay, it's uh, glad that I can come here to Cambodia, very nice country. Yesterday I went to Angkor Wat, very nice temple. Okay, uh, I will I will try to talk to discuss about uh, KOS in uh, microtics. Who is uh, using Q3? Have you used uh, KOS with uh, Q3? Yes? Or simple Q? Which one used Q3? Come on. Don't be shy. On Who is using uh, simple Q? Okay. More simple Q. Makito, what do you use? Q3 or simple Q? Both. Good. <laughs> it's a safe answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sorry, it's actually this is not. I just. <laughs> okay, this is the correct presentation. I, I just uh, wrong one before. So uh, I will I will discuss more about uh, how QoS work on the multi-core routers. So this is not about uh, detail about the Q3 or simple Q, but how it if we use it on the multi-core router. And uh, this is my introduction. I got almost all of the Microtech certificate already, and uh, I do microtech training since 10 years ago so uh, before microtech have trained for trainer because I think uh, I'm one of the first 10 trainers in the world so uh, before microtech have trained for trainer uh, microtech allow me to make a training and also uh, I have my own wireless ISP in uh, Indonesia so I really use Microtik in daily uh, works. So it's not only in labs or uh, in uh, theory. And also uh, several other activities also in the IP allocation. I work for the Indonesia ISP Association. We distribute IP allocation in Indonesia. Okay. Uh, Distributors. Okay, we, we sell almost all of uh, Microtix uh, equipment. I believe Cambodia girls also pretty, and this is one of the Indonesian girl. <laughs> and uh, besides the Microtix uh, hardware, we sell also uh, Intel-based solution for Microtix. So we, we create our own brand and we design our own hardware and we call it Microbits. It's uh, our brand and it's, it runs uh, Microtik Router OS. So if you want a solution with higher speed of the router, this is one of your alternatives, I think. Yeah. And also uh, training, yeah. So far, my company already hosts more than 150 classes, and our target right now is 30 classes per year. So if you can imagine, if one classes is uh, four days, so 30 weeks is al already occupied with uh, training. And also, we already more than 3,500 people in Indonesia and also in some other nearest country. Okay, about the, the topics I discuss, uh, this is all the, all the reference and uh, you don't have to write down, I will, put the, I will put this presentation on the wiki page so later you can download and you can see all the reference. But if you want to really uh, learn about QoS, HTB, and some other related things, I think this is uh, 
a good start where this presentation really talk in detail. Yeah. In some latest presentation, you can get also the video on TikTok. So not only the presentation, but you can also get the, the video. And as you can see, almost all of my presentation is uh, related with uh, QoS because I like uh, QoS in Mikrotix. Okay, what is uh, QoS? Yeah. QoS is uh, one of the very nice feature in Mikrotix. I think one of the very strong point why we should use Mikrotix because uh, not many other hardware can do QoS like, like Mikrotix. Yeah. And QoS is how you manage your bandwidth it's not only about how you limit a customer, but it's also how you can prioritize traffic based on customer, based on uh, protocol, based on activity, and some other things. Yeah. So it's not about how to limit a, a customer. As you can see here, uh, for uncontrolled bandwidth, it's all the protocol just going through and we cannot control because uh, they just occupied. Maybe if one customer download a very big file, uh, that customer is occupied the whole links if you have not big enough link. But with Mikrotik, you can uh, control the bandwidth. Yeah. For example, here you have a gold customer, you have a silver, you have a bronze customer, and also maybe you want to exclude the P2P connection, yeah, peer-to-peer -peer connection. So uh, this, so the customer who use the P2P is not occupied the whole bandwidth. It's very uh, easy to do in Mikrotix. And uh, yes, in my opinion, Mikrotix Router OS is one of the most advanced QoS application so far in the market compared to other brands. Of course, uh, maybe, maybe there are some other brands can do good limitation, but you have to buy in very expensive money. Yeah. But in Mikrotix, uh, all of their hardware use the same software, so you can use same setting, same configuration from the equipment, from the $30 equipment up to $1,000, $2,000 equipment. Yeah. So if you learn in using in the small equipment, you can use it also in the expensive equipment with Mikrotik. And why QoS in, in Mikrotik is good because uh, Mikrotik implement HTB yeah. and also it's a very advanced HTB configuration. Yeah. Uh, in Q3, why, why I asked about Q3 before? Because uh, the most advanced configuration with QS is using a Q3. Yeah. Uh, in Q3, you can make a hierarchy when you can group customer, you can uh, differentiate the VIP customer with a particular customer and uh, it's it really can be a very complicated uh, hierarchy do you know how many level you can make with the Q3 yeah. yes parent and child but how many level we have parent child 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 how many level Maximum. No answer? I will give you my router if you can answer this question. <laughs> no. No. It's really a complicated <laughs> tree if it's a 250 <laughs> level. No answer? Okay. The maximum level on Q3 is a 7 level. Yes. It's not a really big number. But if you can imagine you make a tree with a seven level, it's quite a complicated tree. Yeah. Usually people use only two or three levels. Usually only based on the interface and then based on uh, maybe the group of the customer. 
yeah, gold, silver, or maybe then the customer and maybe the customer have a branches you want to to group that also. Yeah, maybe we usually we use two or three level, but Microtech can support up to seven level. Actually, it's not seven; it's eight level because the most top level is the interface. Yeah, but if you make the the rule, it's only a seven because uh, the top level of your Q3 still use a parent and it is it is a interface. So it's actually it's eight level. Yeah, remember in Q3 you have to choose parent, and parent can be uh, interface. Real interface, uh, virtual interface, or can be other rules. Yeah. Okay, in, so in HTB, what we can do with HTB? Yeah. HTB is uh, mostly the QoS implementation in Router OS is using HTB. Yeah. HTB allow us to create a hierarchy queue. And also the relation between parent and child, and also child with other child. Yeah. For example, if one ca if one child not use the bandwidth, you can uh, set that the allowance can be used by other customer. That's in the simple way. Yeah. You can you can you can group some customers, some rules. This is the example of HTB. If you are using HTB, you will have a parent, you have child, and you have the very bottom child. We call it a leaf queue. Yeah. This is the the logic of the HTB. It's a parent. It's a tree. But this is how we, if you you see in the Winbox, yeah. You can make a hierarchy. This is the parent, this is the subparent, and then this is the leaf, and other things. Yeah. Of course, this is not a real uh, example. This is only a random generated script. But this is uh, to show you how the HTB in router OS can be very complicated. And if we work with uh, Q, we have several different parameters that we can work with. First is the limit. Second is uh, limit at. I think you, if you use QoS before, I think you know the difference. Limit at is uh, when the when the router will give the bandwidth to that customer, uh, and the router didn't think about the priority and add some other things. They just give the limit at. That's the minimum uh, bandwidth the router will give to that customer. And the max limit is when the router still have some uh, bandwidth not used, the router will give that bandwidth to the customer. Yeah. That's the max limit. And also we still have burst. We still have Q-type. But I don't, I won't uh, discuss about Q-type and also parent. This is an example about the, the HTB. Yeah. For example, we have a 10 max of bandwidth and we will give this to two customer. Yes. We play with the limit at and max limit. We still not use priority here. Okay, so if those two customer use the internet maximum maximum speed, how many bandwidth the customer A can get? Those two customer use pipe as big as possible. How many bandwidth uh, customer A can get? Eight? And how about the B? Also eight? 
but the maximum is 10 the question is uh, if those two customer use the internet as fast as possible how many the customer A will get and also the B four and six yes the A will get four and the B again get six because it's a limit at so the the router will calculate the limit at first and if the router know okay four max for A and six max for B and the router don't have available bandwidth anymore that that's all it it didn't go to the max limit yes and uh, for example, if this customer, the A, only used two max, what is the speed of the customer B? Eighth, yeah, eighth. The custom, the router will give first the six max, and the router will calculate. Okay, we still have two max left, and the router will give the. Uh, available to max to the customer B so the customer B will get eight max yeah. okay so if the customer A didn't use any bandwidth what is the speed for the customer B eight yes correct okay that's that's the example uh, about the HTB you, you can play with the limit at max limit and then later you can play the, with the priority you can play with the grouping so if you really want to 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 see uh, how it works you can you can check my presentation i give you the link before yeah this is uh if you didn't do anything about the the limitation so the customer will just take all the bandwidth and it's not controlled And also, uh, one thing usually people uh, do in the wrong way is uh, you make a several Q3 without parent. So only Q3 for customer A, Q3 for customer B, Q3 for customer C. But you don't have parent for it. So if we... For example, this configuration, but no parent. You only have two rules in the Q3 without any parent. Yeah. What happens if we do without parent? If we do without parent, the limit at will not work at all. The router will not uh, think about the limit at, and it's only goes to max limit. Of course, it's eight and eight, and it will uh, uncontrollable. You cannot prioritize with customer. If you want to prioritize a customer, you have to have a parent in Q3. Yeah. This is the one thing usually people do uh, wrong when you make a Q3 in uh, router OS. If you want to make a HDB and QoS in router OS with Q3, you have to have a parent. Yeah. And in, in the parent, you only need to specify the max limit. So, uh, so we, we inform the router how many bandwidth you have. And from that uh, allocation, the router will calculate how many I will give to customer A, how many I will give to customer B, and so on. Yeah. So if uh, this is heaven and you only have 10 max without any parent uh, in in calculation, its customer will have five max and five max. Yeah. If it's really uh, same amount of bandwidth they requested, both will get five and five because there is no parent. Okay, and uh, we also have bursts.
Okay, the question is why we need to use burst? Any idea? Why we need burst? Mm -hmm. Yes, very, very good answer. So uh, we have a limit at, we have a max limit, but sometimes we need burst. Why? Uh, actually, we in, in the ISP business, especially if we sell the bandwidth in a shared uh, policy, yeah, it's not a dedicated one. If it's a dedicated, you can do just max limit and it's done. But if we do a shared service, it means that it's not dedicated. Yeah. So you don't want the customer occupied the bandwidth all the time. Burst is a very nice alternative to do it. Why? Because uh, we can give extra bandwidth for the customer for a very limited time. So, the customer who only use the internet in a good way, they only browse or they can just send email or something a very light way, they will feel that the, the access is really fast because they can go to the burst limit but for customer who do a download or see a movie all the time, they cannot go to the burst limit. Yeah. So the customer who use the internet in a good way, they can get a good speed also for a period of time. There is a, this is the concept and the calculation. So the calculation is the router will calculate the average speed from the last uh, burst time seconds and if the average is above the threshold then the router will give uh, speed up to the burst limit. Yeah. I know this is not a very easy <laughs> definition but you have to, you there is a explanation on the wiki I think it's very clear or you can go to the training but this is the how the burst calculated. Yeah. So the one one thing again uh, that usually people wrong is uh, burst time is not the time when the customer can go to the burst limit. But burst time is uh, the period of time where the router calculate the average. Yeah. So if we if I said the burst time is eight it doesn't mean that the customer can go to the burst limit for 8 seconds. But the router will calculate the average speeds for the last 8 seconds. That's, that's the correct one. So, this is uh, some example of the setting. So the customer cannot go flat with the high bandwidth, it goes sometimes high, sometimes low, high, low. Yeah. This is not good for the people who want to download something, but this is very good for the people who do browse or some regular uh, internet activities. Okay, that's, uh, that's the basic concept of QoS. Now we start talking about the multi-core. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's time the packet goes through a router. The time that the packet will wait is uh, on the waiting time of on the queue. Yeah. That's, that's why sometimes you have a delay if you do ping. For example, if you don't have QoS, the ping will go quite fast, maybe 5-10 milliseconds, but if you put a queue and it's uh, overload, the ping can uh, be higher. Why? Because the packet is waiting on the queue. Yeah. This is where the, the delay usually uh, cause. Yeah. Because uh, the packet goes through the router, it goes to queue, the packet will wait after it's uh, the calculation is say okay to pass. That's that's how the QoS work. Yeah. But it makes a, a delay. And uh, in the router OS version six, they change some uh, 
configuration yeah. before we have a global in and global total here also we have a global out and global total so if there is a packet pass through the router that packet will pass the queue two times first in the pre-routing second is in the post-routing yeah. I hope you are familiar with this uh, flow this is a packet flow of uh, router OS yeah. and because there is two queue uh, on this because there are queues on the, uh, two places here the delay is more and in the router OS version 6 they change that they don't have a queue anymore in the pre-routing and they move to post-routing only okay maybe now I, I know if you don't familiar with packet flow your question is okay but still there are two simple queue So is it means that the packet uh, passing through two queues or only one queue? The objective they change from uh, this one to this one is to make a packet only pass simple queue once, not twice. Yes. If you familiar with the packet flow in Microtix, uh, input is only where the packet goes to the router, not on not for packet passing uh, the router. So if the packet passing the router, it goes only uh, through a pre-routing. There is no queue here, and then forward there is no queue, and then post-routing. We only have one queue here on the last things. So. In the version 6, right now, uh, if you use a simple queue, the queue is uh, done only in the post-routing. Post it's only done once, not twice, as before. Before, in version 5, it's uh, done twice. Once in the pre-routing, once in the post-routing. They change in the version 6. And... Uh, especially in the multi-core right now they have a very good uh, optimization simple queue in version 6 now have a very fast uh, matching process matching process is when the the router find which rule is correct to a specific packets yeah. For example, the router have to looking for the source address. Right now, the simple queue process is really very fast in the version 6. And also, if you do 32 top level queue in simple queue, the router can uh, distribute the load to all processors. Yeah. But if you only have one parent, and a lot of uh, queue under that parent it only using one core cannot go to different core yeah okay uh, we know that uh, CCR is one of the most fastest router available for Microtik right now yes CCR have a 36 core even they are they are preparing the 72 core it will launch in the middle of this year and it's really fast machine I, I test it but if you make uh, rules and it only work only on one core it's only a uh, one gig processors it's not a fast yeah so it's better if you use the configuration that your configuration can work with multi-core you have to understand which one work with multi-core and which one is only work in one core that's uh, that's the key actually 
Okay, this is also uh, some change in the version 6.19. Yeah. Okay. I want to this. I, w I want to show you this. Uh, my my test. I make this test uh, last week before the Vietnam mom and also for this uh, Cambodia mom. Yeah. I using uh, CCR with uh, 36 core. Three CCR. One is the middle one is the QoS and the first one and the third one is the packet generator. Very simple configuration. Yeah, I'm using a traffic generator. Are you familiar with traffic generator, or you still use bandwidth uh, test? In Microtik, they have a bandwidth test. You can send uh, traffic, but right now they have a traffic generator. In traffic generator, you have more flexibility to arrange uh, source address, destination address, uh, what type of the packet size of packet and everything else. So it's it's more like the real bandwidth than the bandwidth tools, bandwidth test tools. Yeah. If you have time, you should try the traffic generator. It will give you more realistic uh, example compared than the bandwidth test. Yeah. So I create uh, 10 streams and its stream is uh, 25 max from different from 10 different IP addresses to 10 different IP addresses so if I run the traffic generator I will got 250 max on one direction and the other machine will send also 250 max so it's a total of half gigs of traffic and uh, this is you can see that it's a 250 max in one direction and we got two directions so it's a total five twelve and the best of the CCR is that the CPU load is zero it's not even one it's a uh, zero percent so it's a it's a really nice router very fast engine yeah. half gigs of traffic and it's still zero CPU load good yeah. but this is without any settings without any configuration and if you want if we want to use a Q3 we have to make a mangle first correct yeah we have to do mark first if we want to use Q3 so I make a 1000 packet mark only a simple only a very simple packet mark just a source address and I put the name Yes, and I don't use uh, connection mark because I just want to test a simple way. Yeah, but if later I actually I test with the connection mark and it still got the same result. What is the result? Okay, this is uh, when I put all the one thousands uh, Q. Eh, sorry, mangle. Yeah, packet mark. 1224 actually uh, and I try to enable it uh, part by part not the whole not the whole uh, rules this is uh, interesting graphics yes and if we still have 500 rules the CPU load is still good 20% but if we have more than 600 rules the, the CPU load is going high very fast the maximum I can put is uh, 640 and it's already reached 100% yes okay what it means it means that uh, if you have one customer at least you have to make two packet mark okay one is for the upload one for the download so if the CCR this is the fastest CCR available right now so if the CCR can work only with 600 
rules it means that the maximum customer you can handle with the CCR is only 300 customer agree yes how about if okay and this is a uh, the show it's a real test so with the 600 is 48 but with the uh, 640 it goes 100% CPU load yeah. and uh, what next yes we are talking about Q3 not only about the mangle so I only enable half of the mangle 512 it's a uh, it's a mangle for one C block up and down one block is a 256 so I make a 256 for upstream and 256 for downstreams of course in real life you don't make 256 because usually you only use 254 but this is uh, I, I make all the IP there yes and I make a Q3 a very simple Q3 just the max limit without limit add, without parent, without anything and uh, just use the packet mark here so without, without the Q3 we got 24 CPU load with uh, 500 mangles and if we enable the Q3 we have 43% almost double but if we see the profile, the profile actually shows that all the load goes to the firewall, not goes to the queue. This is quite interesting uh, number because without the queue, it's only 24%. With the queue, it's 43%. So usually we will think, okay, so the queue takes 20%. But if we see the profile, no, it's not. It's still on the firewall. Yeah, I cannot answer this. You have to ask Microtik guys, because uh, this number also not very accurate in my opinion. So, uh, but if we learn from this uh, statistics, it showed that actually if we do QoS in Microtik, the most resources used is for the firewall, for the mangle, not for the queue. Okay, so another alternative is a simple queue. Yeah. The the simple queue in version six is really nice. Okay, sorry I, I offer the time, ten minutes, but I, I will try to finish in five minutes. <laughs> and uh it's faster algorithm have uh, based on has faster mismatch and uh, if you use a multi-core device and if you want to distribute the load nicely you need at least 32 top level simple queue and this is the graphic from Microtix it can hold up to 25,000 queue yeah so this is a uh, really nice because you know, 25,000 Q. So we try with simple Q. We make 512 simple Q. We, we load on the router. And you can see with the simple Q, it's only 1% of CPU load. Yeah. Same configuration, same number of bandwidth, everything is same same result and with the Q3 you got 40% in simple Q it's only 1% yeah. so uh, actually this is only a test but I have also implementation on the real network it's a uh, 1.4 gigs of traffic and we use simple Q like this and it's only 10% of CPU load so it's a really nice uh, performance 
of router OS if you use SimpleQ. Yeah. So why SimpleQ? Yeah. With SimpleQ, you don't need to use Mangle. If, as we discussed before, uh, Mangle is one of the most taken resources. Yeah, most features that taken the resources. And also, uh, in version 6, you have much, much better simple queue than version 5. If you still use version 5, try to upgrade after you going back to home. You will have a much, much better simple queue in version 6. Yeah. And, but, we can play. We cannot play with uh, with the HTB. We cannot play with the grouping. Yes, it's true, but you still can play with bursts. Yeah. And also uh, in Q3, actually, all Q rules under one interface is considered working with one core. So in sim in Q3, usually we have uh, two big parents. One is the interface going up, and the other is uh, interface going down, and it makes that the the core used by that rules is only two, because if because uh, all the queue under one one interface is uh, processed by one core, so if you buy a CCR with 36 core or with 72 core, and you use Q3 you only occupy two core and the other core is not working at all. Yeah. This is uh, not good about the about the Q3. Yes. In Q3 all Q rules under one interface parent will process by one CPU core. It cannot distribute it to multi cores. So the conclusion of my presentation is if you do QoS for low bandwidth overloaded pipes, for example, you use it for very, very small ISP, very small office, yes, you can use the combination of packet mark and also Q3 and also HTB and you do burst. Yeah. Because you don't have enough bandwidth. You have to group the customer, you have to play with priority, you have to play with burst and some other things. It's okay if it's only for low bandwidth and also for overloaded pipes. But if you play with the big backbone, big ISP, you have more than 100 max, 500 max, I, my, my, Experience that if you if you reach that level, the bandwidth is not the problem. The problem actually the access. But so if you use the QoS for this application, big ISP, big bandwidth, use a multi-core router. There is uh, two alternatives: CCR or you can use also Intel-based router and you use simple queue without parent. Just make a simple, simple queue. Yeah. So this is my conclusion on how you should handle the QoS in router OS. So it's not uh, the same anymore with before. Before I always talk about Q3, 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 don't use simple queue. If you see my presentation three, four years ago, I always say, don't use simple Q, use Q3. But now, uh, if you need an uh, application for big bandwidth, big pipes, you should use uh, simple Q. Yeah. But uh, I got note from Microtik, they will work on the Q3, and I hope that the Q3 performance can be as good as simple Q. But it's still on process. Yeah. So. Next year, uh, maybe they, they, I hope they, they, they will finish that job fast, but if they create that job fast, so next year maybe we will discuss different things. This is uh, related with the version of the router OS right now. Okay? 
that's all if you have a question i think i already uh, pass the time and if you have a question i will be around up to this afternoon you can ask me in person that's okay i'm i will happy to answer your question or you you got my email address you got my twitter you can ask me also uh, online okay thank you very much